Hi guys and welcome back to another video. I hope you are all doing well. If this is your first time checking out my channel, checking out one of my videos, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time out to do that. Really, really do appreciate it. If you find the content, the information in this video useful, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to hit subscribe. With that being said, let's get on with the video. So what is the market value? What is the current price for a card that you have? Now this does only apply to PSA graded cards. And I know some people might have checked this video out hoping this applies to raw cards. And I can do a follow up video later for raw cards if that's what people are really after. The problem with that is you need more knowledge and more experience to be able to evaluate yourself raw cards you need to be able to look at those cards and determine roughly what PSA grade they are and pretty much then apply the same steps you will see in this video to the grade you've roughly estimated that raw card at. So I actually get asked this in my DMs a lot. People will ask about, uh, I'm doing a trade, what's the value, is this worth it? You know, uh, I've got an offer for this card, you know, is it a good offer, should I sell? And to a lot of people's surprise, me and other collectors in the hobby generally don't know the price of a random card. You know, someone might be asking what is a good price for a PSA 7 Shadowless Blastoise, and I don't know, honestly, uh, I, I simply don't know. I don't own the card and I don't track the price. For new people coming into the hobby, it's easy to just assume that collectors with big collections or collectors who have been collecting for quite a while would know what the current price is for you know most cards and an easy way to explain why they wouldn't just know the price of any card is if you just take base set one set for example if we just take the english version of that set so not even any of the other languages so you've got 102 cards in base set you've got first edition shadowless unlimited and fourth print so you've already got four variations in that one language right that's already over 400 cards now you've got PSA graded cards, which go from one to 10, that's now 4,000 cards. So just looking at one set and just looking at one language of that set, you're already at 4,000 cards that you would have to keep track of. And prices can move each week, prices can move daily, monthly, depending on how the market's moving, they will jump all over the place, especially base set unlimited is a, is a set that sells a lot. So in terms of checking those prices, there's a lot of data there, but it does move a lot. So could you imagine having to spend all that time, hours, you know, every day, checking every card that has been sold to work out a price? It's just not practical. And for collectors, people who aren't that focused on the value, you know, they buy cards and keep them in their collection, they're not really fussed what the price is. And most collectors will only care about the price when they come to sell or buy a card. And this is exactly what I would do if I was interested in buying a card. And this is exactly what I know other collectors do. You know, if they're looking at selling or buying their card, they would do this first to work out the market value. So I'm gonna go through with you now exactly how we do that. It really, really is quite simple, but there are a few things you have to look out for. Things like shield bidding, especially. Um, as we go through it, I will explain what that is and how to look out for it. Right, so we're going to want to evaluate this card here, get the market value, and we have a PSA 8 Base Set Unlimited Charizard. I bought this a few years ago, so the price is obviously not going to be anywhere near what I paid for it at the time. So we just head over to eBay and we type in the card it is that we want we want to evaluate. So base set Charizard and I can't spell. <laughs> base set Charizard PSA 8. So pop that in and we will get the current listings of these cards, right? So something to be aware of is anyone can list a card at any price they want. So you don't actually want to be looking at current listings. So what we're going to do is head down here and click on show only sold items. So we want to see how much they have been selling for. Um, and something that a lot of people do, as you can see here, is you put in the actual card number. It, it just helps narrow down the search because, I mean, with Charizard especially, people will just chuck it in the title, even though it's not a Charizard card, just to get traffic towards it. 
Um, so that will really help narrow down the search. So as you can see, yesterday, we've got one that sold for £780. And this is a card that exchanges hands and sells quite frequently because there are quite a lot of them out there and it is popular as a card, right? So as you can see, yesterday we got that sale. The day before we've got 1,100 and you know, that is quite a, a difference, but because this card sells regularly, we will be able to look at all the previous sales and get an average, which is exactly what you really want to do is you're trying to find out, you know, the average price over the last couple of sales. So we've got another one here for a thousand pound. Um, we've got one here for 860, which is actually a PSA 8.5. So that's quite surprising. You'd expect that to go for more as it is a higher grade. Um, a lot of people don't actually like collecting decimal uh, grades though. So maybe, you know, maybe that is why it went slightly cheaper, but realistically the card is in better condition because they've graded it at 8.5. So you would expect that to go higher, but I mean, it could be many reasons. It could have been a one day only auction and not many people saw it, it could have finished early in the morning. Uh, so if we keep going, we've got a best offer accepted, 1,150. So maybe they took 1,100, maybe they took 1,000. Um, but as you can see, there's, there's kind of a, you can kind of get a feel for it as you keep scrolling. Obviously that's a BGS card. Um, you know, they're all, they're all around similar figures, right? So based off this, you know, the quite a lot of sales are around the the thousand pound mark probably you know 900 to a thousand pound roughly you get the odd one that sells cheaper you get the odd one that sells a little bit more it really does depend on an auction you know if you have five people really after that card at that you know on that day at that moment in time then they can end up paying a little bit more um uh, the only thing concerning is obviously this one did go for quite a bit lower so you know maybe i would take the difference between this and a thousand pound and make yeah you know maybe say 900 850 uh, it depends on what you're doing with your card if you're looking to buy or sell some people are happy to to pay market value or slightly over just to secure that card and some people always want to try and get a good deal so it really depends you know you, as long as you're working out a rough average on the last few sales that's exactly how you evaluate your card and what it's worth now, one thing you really, really need to look out for is if this was £2,000, right? If this auction here ended at 2000 and it's surrounded by 1000 you know, 860 not far off 1000 another 1000 another 1000 and then it went 2000 and then back down to, you know, 7800 7, you know. What that would indicate to me is it was probably shield bidded. And if you don't know what that is, Essentially, people will bid on items to inflate the price. They won't pay for it, but they will win the auction at £2,000 um, and then it will show up in sold listings. So if this one was £2,000 and this one wasn't here, someone could come and look at the last sold and be like, oh, well, one sold for £2,000, so I don't want to sell mine for anything less than that. When really, if you look at the average, um, especially with a card that sells so often, it would be really clear that it's not actually worth 2000 and there is another thing you can do to check this. So if you click on the listing and click on the bids, you can see the bidding activity, which is really useful. So quite often, shield bidders will have very low feedback. You know, they, they create a fake account, maybe buy a few things, but or, or don't, and it might just have zero feedback. Yeah, and you will see it quite clearly. It will jump a massive increase and it will be someone with low feedback. Now, that's not to say that everyone with low feedback isn't a genuine buyer. You know, it, it does happen. Statistically, people will have an account at some point with hardly any feedback, right? Um, but it's not a good sign, you know, especially if it is surrounded by thousand pound price points and then it's just doubled, on, 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 you know, the next day. Um, and likewise, someone can have a lot of feedback and still place a shield bid, it does happen. Uh, and then just not pay for the item. And this can also happen on buy it now. So auctions are generally, you know, shield bid uh, worse, but you can still do a buy it now, not pay for the item and it will show up. So just be aware of that. It's something to definitely look out for. And especially for cards that don't sell as frequently as this, 
you know, this card is very easy to track in terms of data to get an average. Because, you know, you look at sold listings, you can look at 10 that have sold in the last week. Take the average. That's roughly the price, right? But if you've got a rare card that doesn't sell that often, let's say the last sold is three months ago. Now, that's obviously hard to evaluate because prices could have moved in three months, but the card just doesn't come up for sale that often. So in that case, what you can do is, you know, look at that last sold for three months ago. Um, you could compare that to new listings. So, you know, if there is one for sale and the last sold was £200, you can always come back here and just check, uh, you know, I mean, this card, for example, you know, I said roughly maybe 900 to 1000 ish. Well, you know, there's one here. You could just look at the cheapest one available to buy and also roughly base it off that and the combination of last solds. Um, but yeah, if it's one that doesn't sell that frequent, you're going to have to look at other cards in that set, maybe that have they all moved up in price if they've all gone from 200 pound to 300 pound for similar you know rarity cards similar grading then it's safe to assume that that card has probably also moved in that same sort of percentage so they are harder to determine but you can still do it you can still uh, break down sort of evaluation but you just need to bit more knowledge a bit more experience in the market and know what sets are sort of trending and moving upwards um, but of course it can still be done you know there's normally a listing for it there's normally some sold items that you can compare it with and that's essentially all you need to do look at sold items look at new listings make some sort of comparison between the cheapest new listing and the average of the last few that have sold and that's pretty much your market value price but always always look out for shield bids but they are quite easy to spot normally it's just a, a big anomaly in the data you know if it's going for a thousand pound for a long time then it's suddenly four thousand pounds what you know the next day well that's a bit of a flag if if it then doesn't continue to go up as well it just drops straight back down obviously it's a shield bid now there are exceptions some people will just pay over market price but I, you know, going from 1,000 to 4,000 on a card that regularly sells, just, it's just not gonna happen. So that's how you get your market value. So I hope that information was useful to you. I hope you feel like you can now just go away on your own, pick any card you want and get the market value for it. Whether you're trying to buy or sell that card, you know, it's essential you know roughly what the market value is before you do either of those things. So if that was useful, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. It really, really does help. And if you want to see more of my videos when I upload them, don't forget to hit subscribe. So until next time, take care.